Hey there YouTube, welcome back. This is the Allegheny Northern in N scale and you just watched the newest addition to the locomotive fleet getting started and uh, doing a quick little back and forth on the tracks. What you're looking at here is an Atlas. This is on their Masterline Gold Series. It is an Elko S-4 locomotive and if you notice, which I'm sure you did, it's naked. That's right, there's no paint scheme on it. And I have been looking for a uh, undecorated locomotive for quite some time. And for some reason, they just seem to be hard to find. Um, and so when I saw this, this Elko, it was perfect. As I've mentioned in previous videos, I absolutely love uh, small little switchers. They're just such a cool little workhorse. And so this one proudly adds to the fleet. Now. The reason I was looking for something that was undecorated was because I want to get some locomotives painted up in a livery that matches the Allegheny Northern. And so this is going to be the first, potentially of many, depending on how this turns out, locomotives that have custom road lettering and paint scheme. So uh, I've got two favorite colors um, that... Um, I am deciding against. One is a very dark kind of forest green. Uh, and then my, my other favorite is, is, is a dark like midnight blue. Uh, I don't think I'm going to put the two colors together. Um, just there's not enough contrast in them. Um, so right now I'm leaning towards this being some, some type of blue. Um, but the, the, green, the green may win. So I'm playing with the computer right now to figure out what I want to do. Um, and mocking up some things, but let's take a look at the locomotive itself. As I mentioned, this is from their Masterline Gold series, and it has some absolutely fantastic detail in it. Uh, obviously, it has an ESU Loke Sound decoder, and for that, I'm very, very happy. Um, and then you can see just all of the detail the fine two scale railings and then there's a little bit of pre-weathering I guess some primer came off in the packaging but you've got separately applied grabs um, in some areas you've also got um, the uh, cut levers lots of rivet detail everything is very clearly printed. There's your separately applied grabs there in the back. And of course, like I said, you've got the uh, the low sound decoder. And there's the, the air hose. Now, I know this is a bit of an older locomotive and doesn't really fit the, the era necessarily of which I'm modeling. However, um, you know, a smaller say class three class two railroad is not going to have the most modern diesels you're not going to have the uh you're not going to have these babies right so that's uh that's left for the big boys and a lot of times those smaller lines have to pick up whatever is left over and so this one makes an awesome addition plus you get the growl of the uh, of the elko which is which is kind of cool so um there's going to be a whole uh, video on detailing the locomotive. This, this video is simply about the actual locomotive itself. So if you're interested, here is the loco number. This is what it is. Um, and as you can see, it is from their Masterline Gold. Now, I will tell you, uh, I have two locomotives from this, from this line. Uh, it's, it's this one, obviously. And then the other one is the Norfolk Southern. That is the one that in the August update we were trying to get to match uh, the NS unit. And through all of my research and all of my, uh, all of my uh, messing around with the control variables, I have concluded that there's absolutely no way to speed match these two locomotives. Uh, it's a problem with the decoder. Um, and not that there's a problem with the decoder, it's just it doesn't have the capability. So uh, the CN has a, an ESU look sound. Uh, that one just has a drop-in uh, Digitrax, and the Digitrax decoder does not offer the, um, the start-hold function um, that 
the uh, ESU does. So it's it's never going to match. It's never going to line up. I can't I can't make it do it. I can get it close, um, but that NS is always going to go first just because it's not waiting for anything. It's not waiting for a sound file. It's just going to start going. Um, so that sucks, um, but that also gives me a reason to upgrade the Operation Lifesaver NS unit to a low sound decoder. So look for that to come. But um, okay, so with this locomotive, obviously the detail is is excellent. I'm very happy with the detail of the locomotive. Um, what I am trying to figure out is with these new locomotives coming from Atlas, although the detail is great, and you've got to be very, very careful with these railings. They are so fine. Um, in fact, the only place that I found on this locomotive that is safe to pick up uh, right now is is the cab. Um, and then the fuel, the fuel tanks and battery box underneath. That's pretty much the only place I would recommend touching this locomotive. Everything else has such detail on it that um, it's just not, it's just not safe to pick up. So uh, I haven't tried to grab the body. Um, I haven't tried to grab the the front. Um, just you, you got to grab it someplace safe. Um, and I'll let that be a life lesson to you, there, gentlemen. Grab it someplace safe. Anyway, um, so this locomotive. Uh, I, it, it did the exact same thing that the CN unit did out of the box, and that was it ran like absolute shit. Um, and having battled the CN unit, which now runs fine, um, I knew what the issue was, and I knew what needed done. Um, so before I shot this video, uh, the locomotive went through its break-in period. It ran around the layout, forwards and backwards, roughly a half hour each uh, to get you know to get everything spinning, um, and then. It started having very poor performance. Um, I cleaned the wheels, and voila, it, it ran for another 45 minutes without a hesitation. Um, so, I don't know what it is, and, and I can show you uh, right here. This is this is from cleaning this locomotive, um, and it was that was what was on the wheels um, out of the box. So I don't know what's going on with the wheels. I don't know why they're like that, um, but they're they're very very dirty. Um, and both of the gold line locomotives that I've had have been like that. Um, so uh, I like I said I don't know why. I don't know what Atlas is doing with their locomotives. Um, but once you clean the wheels for the first time, um, which even is a pain in the ass because the locomotive doesn't want to turn which is one set of trucks which is dirty on the, on the rails where you're trying to clean the other ones it's just it's just a it's a bear once you get them clean you won't have any issues i just don't know what what's on there um so if you bought a gold line locomotive and it's stuttering and the, and the sound is skipping and everything else um try to break the locomotive in give the wheels a good cleaning check your track there's a couple times when the locomotive stopped because it's a short wheelbase locomotive, obviously, um, that it was actually the track that was dirty, so I just cleaned the track there, and then there wasn't an issue. Um, but check to see that your wheels are clean, um, and they've got a real, they had a real thick grime, like almost like the locomotive had been run on dirty track for, for months, um, and that thick black buildup that you get on there. Um, but anyway, that carbon came right off, the uh, and, and now the, the train will switch between forwards and backwards it'll run at low speed um so you, you know it's just a thing that you got to go so you can see it's still a little dirty there as you can see it you know flicking out um so i'll give this one more clean because it has been running a lot around the track and there you go there's a good there's a good example of what exactly what i was talking about so um it, it will it will crawl i had it crawling earlier um so you just got to Got to get it clean. Like I said, I don't know what Atlas is doing, but once you get it up and running, it's a decent little locomotive. So, uh, I want you to stay tuned. Uh, in future videos here, we will go ahead and start getting this detailed, get some custom lettering and numbering on this baby. And uh, this will be the first locomotive in the fleet that is wearing the Allegheny Northern Livery. Okay, take two on slow speed. I had to clean the wheels again, as you could tell from the end of that last video. So that is what happens with these these gold line models, at least the two that I've purchased. No idea why. I don't know what Atlas is doing, and I don't know if there's some coating for protective purposes or what. Um, 
And bear in mind that I'm dealing with a small um, wheelbase locomotive here too, so it's probably picking up some crap on the tracks. But um, you can see that once you get once you get it cleaned, it will crawl like you need a switcher to crawl. So um, you know, loss of points there for Atlas for having to to, to deal with that on startup. But uh, like I said, once you get it going, it it will it will get going. So if you have one of these locomotives and you're having issues with it right now, um, just be patient. Uh, it does work itself out, and you can um, get reliable operation out of it uh, with just a little bit of cleaning. And I have noticed that even sometimes when I switch from forward to backwards, sometimes it, it has an issue, but does not seem to be having that issue now. So I think I've got it cleaned enough. Okay, so decorated versions of this locomotive uh, I see running for about $180 um, online, and the undecorated version is going to cost you just about two bills. Um, obviously, uh, I'm not real sure why the undecorated is more expensive, but uh, I'm guessing there's quite a few folks like me looking for them since they've been hard to find. And uh, stay tuned for the future paint scheme edition of this locomotive.